Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Wednesday, March 29, 2023. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? First, we have a nice big healthy up day, which leads us back to the future. Yesterday's video had the title can they squeeze up? That was the title cover on the video. We talked about a number of things last night, and I do want to rehash one of them because it's uber important. Remember this line that we discussed? This is a potential neckline of a potential inverse head and shoulders pattern. It goes like this. Here's your left shoulder. Here's your head. And then you have a right shoulder. The neckline is connected from point A to point B, and if you get above and stay above, that has a much higher target ultimately than we are now. We're not saying they're going there. We're not saying they won't fail back down in a day or two. We don't know. That's not what I'm saying here. All I'm bringing to your attention is they got above and they stayed above on close today, this potential inverse neckline of a potential head and shoulders pattern. Why do I use the word potential? Looks good enough to me. It's probably not the best one on the board, but I think it's valid. They also got above a big fat round number of 400. We talked about the fact that that's about the vicinity where this neckline would come in. On the hourly chart, you can still see the neckline and you can see where 400 is and you can see that was essentially overhead resistance until the last push until the end of the day. Now, were inside the number members and inside the number live room members able to make money on this today? The short answer is yes. We'll get back to that later. Here's another thing that we have to realize and it's in the camp of, check this out. We talked about breakdown candle highs. We talked about this one in particular. We talked about another one, but this one in particular where the market ran a test and it was summarily rejected. We're talking about this breakdown candle high right here. Where does it come in at? It comes in at 401.48 to be precise. So they didn't close above it today, but they certainly ran another test to get above it, tried to get above it. The high today is 401.60, and there was a little tiny rejection at the end of the day. You can see it on a short term chart. When they got up there, look what happened. They just hit it, they spiked it, and then they refused to close above it. Doesn't mean they won't gap above it tomorrow, just like they did today, above an important number. Now, we're getting closer to how was money made today, where was the money made today, what were traders looking at, what was I saying that indicated there was money to be made today. Before we get there, if they can eclipse this pivot here, this is 402.50. The next place they're going to want to go is 404.50 to maybe as high as 405 without running into overhead resistance. Put that on a sticky note. Since we're the umpire calling balls and strikes, what does the other side look like? What happens if you wake up tomorrow and they've pulled the rug out? They've opened the trap door. They're issuing pies in the face to the traders that were long today and into the evening hours, into tomorrow, meaning an overnight long. What if they're pulling the rug out from those people? They'll come down here and fill the gap, and if they get below these moving averages, you have a failure on your hands. No both sides of the tape. It's a lot of points away, but that's the situation. What if they're pulling back? Is there another buy for another jolt higher into end of week? end of month, end of quarter, which all culminates this Friday. Are they jamming them up into the end of the quarter? If they're doing that, they're going to get to 404 and a half to 405. Put that on a sticky note. Let's review inside the numbers and see what happened today. So the early thoughts at zero dark 30, first we're saying the overnight crew was busy conducting a goose operation slash jam session driving price up around the big fat round number of SPY 400. Let's start with the pivot today. 
398.95. You'll see another pivot come out later if they were to come down more, and you'll see this turn into support. But either way, the look at zero dark 30 is 398.95. We think better in pictures. Right of the vertical is today's activity. 398.95 is your horizontal line, and that deserves a how you doing? Above, she floats higher. Sometimes they come up short, other times they spike them through. Under normal garden variety conditions, there's traditional bull bear battle around SPY 400. Back to the pictures, 400 is now the horizontal line. Another, how you doing? It's not rocket science stuff. It's in the camp of, I've seen this before. Now note this, below the pivot, 398.95 isn't bearish, but can promote some tests for lower prices. Let's scroll up, see what else we have. Remember to pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. Now, today I got itchy. I had ants in my pants. I had to get this up at 8.45 rather than later in the morning. Here's the way this one works today. You're gonna wanna pay attention to this because this is what I consider value to my members. It starts here. Big picture is end of month and quarter this Friday. Is today the beginning of a squeeze operation to issue some pies in the face while painting the tape for quarterly bonus time? Institutional traders slash money managers, all those people. We don't know exactly, can't prove it either way, but I've seen this routine before and it's not my first rodeo. What we do know is where the line in the sand is to keep the band playing on, that's for the bulls, and the door open for a squeeze up to around 401.50 for starters. Let me repeat that. For a squeeze up to 401.50 for starters. Back to the pictures, 401.50 is now the horizontal line at the top of the screen. You can see what happened here. They got there today. They spiked it through by a few pennies and didn't close above. All on the board long before the opening bell. How you doing? Where's the line in the sand? 397.40, they came nowhere near there today. Staying above keeps the flame kindling for the initial boost on a rocket ride. You get the point in what I'm trying to say here today? Natural resistance around 400 is expected, but the first prize is going to be 401.50, give or take. They did that. Remember, this is at 8.45 in the morning. Above there, we'll talk grand prize. We already talked about it here wasn't necessarily expecting more than that today. So what's the play? Any pullback to 397.40 in the neighborhood, the vicinity, even an adjoining city is a buy for a bounce back and further rally. Notice I didn't say scalp. I said further rally. They might not even get to 397.40 as 398 could be a showstopper. They didn't even get to 398. Trader's choice, but the idea, remember, but the idea is to get long and stay that way, provide the tape is above 397.40. Getting below and the entire concept is incorrect. Anybody questioning whether or not I was pounding the table today? 9.15, still before the opening bell. Sometimes they don't let you in and just take off out of the gate. I'm not a proponent of chasing the tape. It generally doesn't work out well. I'm a proponent of buying pullbacks as long as they're above 397.40. Again, another pound on the table. Let's see what else we have. 918, an aggressive, out of the gate type of trade is a spike of 400, will normally have a reaction in the other direction, scalp with potential. There's your scalp with potential. For a trade, a short term trade, a few points, whatever, I'm fine with that, but I want it to be long for the better ride. Closing candles above 400.25 opens the door for another push higher. A touch and spike of 400 is a good place to begin such a shakeout back down a little bit to let us in the long trade. That was the concept. There's 400 again, just so you have the visual. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work. First, they came up short of 400. You can read them. You can go back to the chart and double check them. It's all in here from a tour guide perspective. Now you start to see 398.95 is support, as is 398.15. I would like to be a buyer down near 398. That's what I'm looking for 
what I discussed in the room and what you see here at 398.95 support and all that and the concept of what they're actually doing is just buying a pullback was the concept. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work. The concept was they're not going to blow through 400. They didn't do that. They went sideways. They pulled back a little bit. They had 398 and slightly lower as support. And then they began eating time off the clock. You know what happened next. The rest is history. Technically, I put a number on the board. They never got down to my number, but I pounded the table in here, and I pounded the table in the live room. Plenty of traders took the ride. They knew where the exit was. They gave you everything that you signed up for. 11 o'clock, check this out, 11.03, no change. The concept is this, gap higher open and early morning high. They did that. Pull back into the zone of support for a buy. Put in a late morning low. They did that. Higher low and a rally back. They did that. As long as they don't get below 397.40, this concept is on the table. Another pound on the table, of the table. Pause them, read them, go back to the chart to double check the work. It's all in here. Once they started getting above 400.25, the door opens for 401 to 40150. They did all that. We had a list of stocks on the move, but nothing hit its entry objective. Ross stores came close. Everything else didn't. They just took off out of the gate with the rest of the market. But we did have another trade in the live room. This one came up after the open. Netties, we identified a price of 87.70, 87.65. This was discussed in the live room. Traders took it in the live room. They got the quick rocket ride for the quick trade. Nice trade. There's something for everybody. There was a short, there was a long spiders, there was a netties trade on a day when most traders really didn't do much. What's going on over in Camp IWM? Actually, a little relative weakness against the SPY, but an up day over 1% nonetheless. We're not going to read too much into that. They're climbing this big breakdown candle. Will they get to the high or not? The high is right around 177 and change. Eclipse that and the 20 period moving average, and it's going to open the door for a push toward 180. Transports, same routine. They had an up day, but they're still inside this range. Remember, favorite market leading indicator, that's the IWM, slight relative weakness against the SPY. Transports, number two favorite indicator, a number one canary in the coal mine, also slight relative weakness against the SPY still in this range until they're not. Are they just going to run a test to the top of the range and come back down? Or are they going to bust through and do something different like up to 14.5 to 14.6? About relative strength on the Q people. Above all the moving averages, the trend is your friend. Two numbers above 318.50 and 322.5 to 323 is on the board. Above that, you're into the 100 period moving average. This pivot high here at 334.42. That was big picture from the weekly chart. You can't see it on this chart too well. Put it on a sticky note. Financials getting a reprieve, but they still have to get above this high here at 32.05 to make anything happen. And then above that 20 period moving average, that space between 32 and the 20 period moving average will be bona fide overhead resistance. Call it 32 to 32.75. Sticky note material. Smash mouth, uptrend, up 3% today. We've talked about this. This chart always looked good, especially from the weekly perspective. That's not the weekly variety. That is the weekly variety. They're headed to 265.40, 265.50. It's an arbitrary number, 265.42. They can get above there, but that's the next place of a target type variety. Not a lot of magic today. In the midst of a squeeze operation, may last into the end of the week slash month slash quarter. Don't be surprised if they have a shakeout operation in between. That's normal garden variety stuff. But this is one of those, the writing was on the wall. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.